a mysterious object has been caught on tape over Albany, New York. It, it looks suspiciously like a missile. Is that possible? Yeah, that's pretty scary over a commercial airport, but uh, I don't know, whatever it is, it was going very fast, it was above the clouds, and it was hundreds of feet in length. So the FBI has seen this tape? Yeah, they, they took it from me, and uh, it's on its way to Washington to be analyzed. Now, what do you think it is? I mean, just looking at it, are you, you calling it a UFO, or are you calling it uh, a missile? What does it look like to you? Uh, a lot of people are saying that it's, it's this thing called a rod, which I'm not sure about. Um, these biological creatures that live in the upper atmosphere, which sounds strange, that we haven't uh, discovered yet because they're, they just move too fast for us to see. It doesn't, so, so some, somebody's telling you that thing is an animal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this, this guy, Jose Escamilla, he's been researching these for like eight years. He has a website and that's what he thinks. It's amazing. No telling what these things are going to teach us once we catch a specimen and uh, investigate what its makeup is. But it's an incredible phenomenon. Whatever these things are, they've mastered the ability to travel through both mediums. There's, there's nothing really there. It's like traveling through dimensions. The rods are just a, one part of an enormous panorama of life that is veiled from the normal human sight. You found that by using an extremely fast shutter, you could slow down and objectify something that would otherwise elude the photographic process. But that doesn't mean that they're not there. It just means that you need a device, an apparatus that will remove an optical limitation that you have. Uh, we don't reject the microscope because the microscope intensifies the power of human sight. Without it, the world of the microbe would not exist. But that wouldn't alter the fact that our entire environment, our entire living scenario, is really conditioned upon what happens in a, in a domain that we cannot see directly. In my opinion, the same thing applies, and this will be verified in years to come, at the upper border of nature. But I realized at this point that it's very secret, that the, it was kept secret because I asked him, what are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So they're pesky little creatures uh, appearing on this uh, photograph they wanted to get rid of. This is a fact of the matter. We were really not sure after John flew whether or not there were critters, living critters, out there somewhere. Critters that were captured by NASA on that mission, the STS-75, in 1996. In all my considerable experience of the entire UFO scenario, I have never seen and never expected to see footage like that. And least of all did I expect to see it on film letter or, or tape that had been exposed by the government in a NASA mission. The shuttle Columbia in this mission was equipped with a very sophisticated and expensive ultraviolet camera. It was sensitive to the near ultraviolet and when they were up at 300 miles above the atmosphere they launched from the Columbia a small satellite with a tether not long after it was launched from the Columbia, the tether broke. We record steadily the whole uh, break and uh, coil back to the tether. Copy, Claude. Here we go. Give this a view of the satellite. Well, if it had to break, it, it did it in the right place. And you see on this astonishing film, you see the uh, satellite go drifting far astern of this orbiting Columbia. The tether, which is 12 miles long, straightens out into a long white line, which you can see as plainly as, as could be. Columbia and the satellite now 77 nautical miles apart. Now, while this is all going on, a whole covey of UFOs, perhaps three dozen of them, manifest to this ultraviolet camera and they begin moving around circulating looking for all the world like something in an aquarium tank the satellite 
again, uh, just moving into sunrise. Now, Houston, of course, down on the ground, is getting this feed from, from the Columbia, and they ask the astronauts in the shuttle, what can they see? What is it they, what is it they can see? Guys, getting the image? Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? Well, the long line is, uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us. It is like a brilliant white bar. It looks like a neon sign, and it's 12 miles long. Now, what this does is give you a sort of cosmic ruler by which you can get an idea and an estimate of the diameter of the UFOs that are flitting around down there. Now, when you see them go behind the tether, that means that you can use that tether like a ruler to measure their diameter. And those things that are down there going behind the tether are between two and three nautical miles in diameter. One of the things you see over and over again is you see UFOs materialize into the ultraviolet while you watch. You see them come from out of nowhere to the point where they are returning a response to the camera. You also see them dematerialize while you, while you have them under observation. There's two of the central things that have gone on with UFOs since day one. Materialization and dematerialization. It's going on in this film 300 miles above the Earth, photographed by your government with your astronauts superintending the whole thing. Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the tether. Tommy Houston, that's a much better view, uh, a lot more contrast visible. It's not an infrequent occurrence out there. They have quite often. There were probably 1,500 reported cases. Uh, I have... Uh, over 3,000 cases now. They estimated 100 yards from the left wing with this 100-foot disc. And the strength of the signal was as strong as the...